Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and let's talk about all of the weird, unanswered questions and plot holes in the What If finale. You are the guardians of the multiverse. You probably have a lot of unanswered questions, and I'm sure the main one is, wait, did I miss an episode about Gamora? And the answer is yes, there was going to be a Gamora episode, but I'll explain that a little later in the video. So a lot of you had questions on my Twitter and our community page that asked me to fill in all of the plot holes of this episode. So let's get started. Here's one. How did Peggy know the name of Natasha's dad? So remember, to earn Nat's trust, she tells her, Your father is Ivan, your da's Alexi. Now, Alexi was the Red Guardian, her fake dad from her fake childhood in Ohio, but Ivan was the name of her birth father that the Red Skull revealed to her. Not because he knows your daddy's name. I didn't. So if Natasha didn't know the name of her dad and couldn't find the identity of her mom and Black Widow, then how did Peggy know? I'm just speculating here, but it seems like Peggy and Natasha had a much closer relationship than Natasha and Steve did in the main MCU timeline. In The Winter Soldier, Steve sort of kept Natasha at arm's length. What's on it? I don't know. Stop lying. I only act like I know everything, Rogers. Maybe because he was always paranoid about her flirting with him, trying to seduce him to earn his trust, and maybe in this other reality, Nat could have grown up idolizing Captain Carl. Carter. So maybe, since they're so close, Peggy helped her track down her birth parents. After all, I don't think Nat ever told Steve about her childhood in Ohio, at least not around the time The Winter Soldier was released. That movie's what solidified their bond. Who do you want me to be? How about a friend? Okay, here's another one. Why did they steal the Soul Stone first and use it to power the Stone Crusher? Now, this is just my theory, but remember what the Red Skull said. Soul holds a special place among the Infinity Stones. You might say it is a certain wisdom. So we've seen that the stones have a kind of intelligence. They're drawn to each other as Thor's vision indicated in the Ultron deleted scene. The infinite six cannot be joined nor kept apart. And the Tesseract showed intelligence to send the Red Skull to Vormir, so the stones are linked. But the Soul Stone links them all together, provides the intelligence, the wisdom. So it takes the Soul Stone to power the machines because it can command the other stones. Someone else asked where Gamora got the Stone Cutter, and I thought this was obvious. She begins the episode on Nidavellir, melting the Infinity Gauntlet. She's trying to make sure that no one can ever use the stones to wipe out half of all life. So she would have commissioned Eitri to create a device that could destroy the stones. But again, we're going to cover all of that later in the video. I hate with it. This show is so great because it has a very relatable premise. Everybody's looked at their life and, you know, wondered what if. It really makes me think about what I would leave behind for the people I love. And really, so should you. If you have a family that relies on your income, then you need life insurance. Now look, I know choosing insurance policy seems weird and complicated, but that's why I recommend Policy Genius, the sponsor of this video. It's very easy to use. Head over to policygenius.com slash screencrush to get started. In just a few minutes, you can work out how much coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to get your best price. Policy Genius is not an insurance company. They help you to compare quotes from more than a dozen of the top insurers all in one place. It's their job to work with different insurance companies to find the best rates for you. And they handle all of the paperwork and applications for free. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. And you can save $1,300 or more per year by using Policy Genius to compare your life insurance policies. Eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week. Remember what Jack Napier said. Think about the future. And don't put this off till you're older because life insurance is way cheaper when you're still young. Get a good rate now and lock it in for decades. So head over to policygenius.com slash screen crush to get started right now. A lot of people asked why the stones are different in some realities, and I think it makes total sense that they would be a little different. After all, the stones embody each aspect of the universe and guard each individual timeline. The Infinity Stones create what you experience as the flow of time. So if a universe was a little bit different, then it makes sense that the stones' composition would be a little bit different too. Like in one reality, Keith Moon was their drummer instead of Charlie Watts. Boo! Boo! Now, I was wondering after this episode that if the stones are different in every reality, does that mean that Tony Stark's snap might not be as effective because it used stones from three different realities? Well, if that's the case, then the blip could also be undone, and I don't see Marvel doing that. So my guess is that the realities were similar enough for Tony's snap to be permanent. And a lot of people asked why they didn't just use zombie Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet at the end. Well, look, maybe Spider-Man and the others had already taken the gauntlet off of him, but mostly, I just think that you don't want to engage omnipotent zombie Thanos. The risk of unleashing him in the multiverse is way worse than Ultron. Just an all-powerful cosmic dude who knows only hunger. But a lot of people did ask how Zombie Steve could be in this portal since we saw him. 
And the answer is easy. It's the multiverse, baby. These could have just been different zombies from different realities. Lance Camus on Twitter asked why Strange Supreme would just agree to guard the pocket dimension for all of eternity. Simple answer, Lance, to its own. He destroyed his reality and he wants to make up for it by saving every other reality. And I don't think he'll intervene and use the stones. I think he has learned his lesson. And Gregory Basor on Twitter has a great question and provides his own answer. Did the surprise reaction of Uatu at the end of the Party Thor episode indicate that this was an alternate version of Uatu than in the last two episodes? Now, this is what I thought initially, that this was simply a different Uatu from a different multiverse. Wait, what? But then he adds, or did seeing Infinite Ultron prompt him to find the universe that spawned him and look into his history, creating a time loop? So the idea here being that he sees Ultron invading the Party Thor universe. He goes, well, that's weird and he travels to the timeline where Ultron won. And since he can't help himself, he narrates what's happening and attracts Ultron's attention. Time loop. Inside Journey One on Twitter asks, how can you insert a pen drive without a port, referring to shooting the USB arrow into Ultron? Well, we saw Hawkeye use this arrow in the Avengers, where it looked like it had many adaptable settings. Plus, I would imagine that Ultron will just absorb any data that's near him, and that he's not super limited to hardware. Someone else asked why Zola is in the arrow when he was placed in the Ultron bot, but that's just how digital technology works. You can copy things and they can exist in two places at once. Someone else asked why an old computer from the 70s like Zola is able to defeat the most advanced computer in the universe, and they explained how in the last episode. The Zola AI is analog, meaning that Ultron can't break down its code. It's also why Ultron couldn't break down one of those old reel-to-reel -reel PC games from the 80s shown here in an LGR video. Inside Journey 1 asks why Strange didn't create the pocket dimension earlier. Well, it's because that at this very moment, neither Zola nor Killmonger has the stones. They are deadlocked, and their entire being is focused on gathering the stones together. If it were just Ultron or just Zola or just Killmonger, then they would realize their predicament and break free. But since neither of them has the stones, they are unable to realize their full surroundings. Ethan Houlihan asks why Zola was able to remove the stones from Killmonger. Well, I think it's because he has the Mind Stone, sort of like how Ultron was able to make the Mind Stone float around. But also, as I said earlier, the stones are drawn to each other. Because Zola has the greater intelligence, maybe he's able to use the Mind Stone to summon the others. Gardevoir the Shining asks why Ultron didn't go after the stones from other realities and become truly unstoppable. My guess is it either did didn't occur to him because it wasn't necessary, or, more likely, using so many stones at once would have overloaded his circuits, like uh, having too many windows open on a browser. Alonzo GD on Twitter asked how Killmonger could wield all the stones and Tony died just immediately. Well, that was Tony using all of the stones and Killmonger was only using them one at a time. But also, this suit is made of vibranium and Tony's armor was not. So I assume that it can absorb the energy just fine since that's what vibranium does. Gregory Bayshore asks, if there are infinite realities, then are there infinite visions of Ultron that also got the stones and threatened the multiverse? Well, there are infinite Ultrons, but not infinite Watcher screwing all of this up. The problem here isn't that Ultron gained the stones, it's that the Watcher made him aware of the multiverse. I see you. And this is one of my favorites, did Captain Carter really say bollocks? <laughs> yes, she did. Almost as bad as when Loki said this. You mewling David Chapper asks why the Watcher didn't bring Black Widow to the live action universe, and I have two answers. One, she was more needed in this universe, and two, Scarlett Johansson just sued Disney. She ain't putting on that leather jumpsuit anytime soon. Or is she? Miguel Christopher asks why the Watcher brought Killmonger instead of Pepper or Shuri, and the answer is in the episode. He needed someone who would try to steal the stones, otherwise Zola would have ended up with them. They can only neutralize the stones by deadlocking these two forces. And a lot of you asked how Loki could have had the scepter at the end if he wasn't a aligned with Thanos, and you've answered your own question. He must have aligned himself with Thanos. In the main MCU, Loki loses his bid for power on Asgard, falls into a wormhole, finds Thanos, and then makes a deal with him. So he clearly knew Thanos was out there in the galaxy looking to get an Infinity Stone off of Earth, which also happened to be his brother's favorite planet. So in this reality, he successfully invades Earth, but then Captain Marvel strikes back at his fleet. So he makes a deal with Thanos. Help me defeat Captain Marvel, and I'll get you your Infinity Stones from my shiny new planet. And a lot of people asked why Steve was on the boat at the end. Now, I think this is going to be answered in season two, which is said to have another Captain Carter episode. Now, I'm not sure if Steve's been like the Winter Soldier this whole time, but my guess is he's been frozen in the armor for years and 
maybe Hydra was planning on reviving him. But now let's talk about Gamora and how she and Tony ended up on Nedivalir. We're going to go over this in way more detail in another video, so subscribe and smash that bell to get an alert and make sure you don't miss it. So basically, there was originally 10 episodes planned of this season, but because of COVID, one of them was delayed to season two. This episode would have shown Tony Stark being stuck in space at the end of the Avengers because he didn't quite make it before the portal closed. Then a portal would have opened that dropped him on Sakaar. And presumably, once there, he would have built new armor, entered the Contest of Champions, and encountered Gamora, who has been sent to kill him by Thanos. But together, they defeat Thanos, become winners of the Contest of Champions, and then proceed to melt down the Infinity Gauntlet and commission Eitri to build the Infinity Stone Crusher. Well, those are just all the plot holes that we found, but if you have any you want answered, please let us know in the comments or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.